He's considered by many to be the single most creative designer on the face of the planet, yet few people have really had the opportunity to hear Alexander McQueen speak about his life and work. Once known for being an angry young man, McQueen has avoided the press in recent years, preferring that his creations speak for themselves. Shortly after he received an honorary doctorate from the Academy of Art University in San Francisco, I was given the rare opportunity to sit down with Mr. McQueen for a wide-ranging interview that explored all aspects of his career. I've been working in fashion for 15 years, but I think uh, I've come to a stage where I just accept it. I accept it, this is my life, this is what I was born to do. As the son of a London taxi driver and the youngest of six children, Alexander McQueen wasn't exactly born into the type of life that could foretell his future as one of the most respected fashion designers in the world. He quit school at the age of 16 to learn his trade with the tailors of Savile Row and was later accepted to London's prestigious fashion school, Central St. Martins. Entering the fashion world with something to prove, he soon became known as the Enfant Terrible of British fashion with collections that consistently shocked and challenged. Fashion is a big bubble and uh, sometimes I feel like popping it. Did it piss you off? No, well, it should have done. That was the idea. I think McQueen had a very sort of abrasive, aggressive, but necessary relationship with the fashion press, you know, right from the very start, because he was very confrontational. And the designs themselves were so challenging that even if you didn't like the designs, you actually had to write about it or use them in photographs because they were so different. And here clearly was an angry young man who was determined to be seen and heard. I mean, you really do piss a lot of people <laughs> off. <laughs> I was a bit of a tyrant, wasn't I? I was a bit of an hooligan. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was, a, I was a very friendly <laughs> in, my, in my persona, but... Um, I, th I don't think I, I'm misunderstood now because I think I've made a conscious effort to communicate better. I was always snuffling and sniffing and, you know, <laughs> pouring with sweat. I was a mess most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think uh, because it was so hard to deal with. I mean, I was 26 when I went to Paris, and, uh, and I'd only been out of college like two years, and I know I was the head of uh, French couture house, and it was like thrown, in a, thrown to the lions. And the only person who was feeling it was for me, and there's like, I had, on one hand, I had um, people saying I was a misogynist for my own label, and on another hand, people saying I didn't understand couture, so what was people giving me? <laughs> you know, they weren't giving me no leeway. To be honest, the last maybe five years, I've been good. Uh, you know, uh, there was a period when it wasn't so good and I had a lot of angst and um, it was kind of hard. There was a lot of confliction in my head uh, with doing a job that I didn't particularly want to do, which was Givenchy, and, um, and then I was, do you know... But then it's, my life started to level out and, and my work got more and more poetic. Gucci said that they, uh, when they, when they decided to back him and buy into his company, that they wanted to back creativity, and that's exactly what they've done.
there comes a time in your life where you don't have to spell it out for so many people what you're about. I think, you know, I was so so determined to drum into people what I was like that I forgot what I was actually doing, which was fashion. And it becomes so much about a show, but now it comes, it's a balance. It be, and the, as well as the show, the collection itself is poetic. best show or do you, do you get you know so married to each and every one of them that you can't you know really just they're, they're all so different I mean I, I love the robots for Shalom <sighs> the two you know it's all poetic emotions that like oh, it was just like man and machine it was yeah. kind of poignant and it I was actually the only I cried at that as well it's the only <laughs> show I actually cried <laughs> The last one uh, with Kate was poignant, not just for me, but for Kate herself. This was to take her to at the atmosphere and, you know, above newspapers and the media. It was just... And it did it. It shocked him, you know? She was bigger than that. People keep on asking me continuously, do I, do I ever run out of ideas? And how do you better that show? And how do you better the chess match? Or how do you better the snow show? Or, mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I don't know where it comes from. I just, you know, there's someone up there who's thrown it down at me and saying, do this one now. <laughs> <laughs> you've done the fire, you've done the snow, you've done the rain. You're know, walking on water, you've parted the red waves. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it all. Oh, you've seen it. I'm trying to think <laughs> what else to do. Now we start the game. B3, 2, C4. Bishop, A2. Checkmate. Do you find this to be a lonely business? Because at the end of the day, it's your vision that has to be executed. Mm. to make the company fly? Yeah, it, it can be. I mean, I think there's more to life than fashion, and I don't want to be stuck in that bubble of this is what I do, because it's nice because you see everyone in the office, they go home and they can shell off. But I'm still like that Alexander McQueen after I shut the door. Do you know what I mean? I've got to go That's home right. with myself. Yeah. So, and, you know, if you've had a bad day, you've only got myself to answer to. So. <laughs> Behind the scenes access. Okay, so did you hear that? Live updates. Madonna and Lady Gaga are confirmed to be here. Don't tell too many people, it's gonna be a mob scene. Fashiontelevision.com, your portal to fashion on the web.